So the stage is set for a fight between the Commonwealth and the states. Over $80 billion in cuts to funding and education and health over the next 10 years. The surprise manoeuvre is being seen as a ploy to get the states to plead for more revenue, and that means a higher GST. The Premier of South Australia, Jay Wetherill, and Queensland Premier Campbell Newman joined me a short time ago. Gentlemen, welcome to 7.30. Pleasure. Campbell Newman, starting with you, can you run your state's schools and hospitals with billions of dollars less from Canberra? Well, it remains to be seen what the impacts are uh, when we look at the fine detail, but I say this, it will have real impacts. Let me just give you a, a very local example. In my electorate, the money that we got, the extra money we got that's gone into education is helping kids with learning difficulties actually achieve the same results as other kids. So, for example, in one of my schools, a young Aboriginal child has seen her, um, her results go through the roof after this intense uh, coaching and counselling that she's been getting due to the federal money. Uh, that then disappears in only four years. That's the sort of human impact um, that we'll see from, a, from a, a, a reduction in funding. Jay Weatherill, if I can ask you a similar question, will schools or hospitals have to close in your state if this reduced funding goes ahead? Well, what we know is that it's about $5.5 billion that's been ripped out of South Australia. Uh, that's uh, the equivalent of about 600 hospital beds, which is about the size of one of our large uh, teaching hospitals, uh, the Flinders Medical Centre. Uh, or it's about 3,000 teachers. Um, so that's what's been ripped out of uh, South Australia as a consequence of last night's budget. And remember that this was, this was an agreement. This is uh, a binding agreement between the Commonwealth and the state. It was uh, committed to again in the federal election. It wasn't mentioned at the COAG meeting we just had a, a few weeks ago. It wasn't even mentioned last night. You wouldn't have known about these cuts if you'd listened to uh, Joe Hockey's speech last night. Let me ask you about, about that, Campbell Newman. Um, this did come as a surprise. Do you think, given the quantity, the, the amount of money that's going to be taken from you over the 10 years, do you think this is an attempt to wedge the states into asking for and owning, therefore, a raise in the GST? Well, Sarah, I watched uh, intently when you interviewed uh, Joe Hockey last night and you put that to him, and I'm afraid that is indeed the conclusion that I reached uh, from his response. Um, and I'm not going to play that game, and I don't think the other Premiers want to play that game. We want to actually fix the problems that face this nation. And I'm afraid it is disappointing. It was sort of lobbed on us last night in this way, particularly when we had a COAG meeting only two weeks ago. Campbell Newman... The Prime Minister this morning said that he wants you to be an adult and grown-up government. It sounds like he's accusing you of being petulant. I think that's very unfortunate. Again, two weeks ago, we were talking about the reform of the Federation. Uh, to, uh, last night, uh, without any warning, we were told essentially that significant chunks of money, $80 billion across the states and territories for the forwards, um, just disappears. Now, yeah, that's just not on. We, we need to hammer out a proper way of making our federation work. That's what we need to do. And I'm more than happy to do that cooperatively. But you don't, you know, you don't tell people they've got responsibilities and then not to give them the money to deal with it. Jay Weatherall, let me just ask you the question about the GST. Um, federally, the Labor Party has ruled out a raise to the GST. Are you going to have to ask the, fe the federal Labor Party to reconsider? No, we're not playing that game. Um, they've shifted this problem over onto our side of the table. We're going to shift it right back where it belongs. They've made these cuts. Uh, they have to explain and take responsibility for these cuts. Uh, we're not going to go cap in hand to the Commonwealth Government and try and solve a problem of their creation. This is the Liberal Party's responsibility. The Liberal Party are going to take political responsibility for these cuts. We're going to campaign against these cuts. They're unacceptable. Uh, they, uh, the burden of the adjustment has been put on to ordinary working men and women of Australia, and it is unacceptable. They've quarantined their mates on the big end of town. Where, before we talk about how we respond to these cuts, we haven't given up the campaign to resist them. And we'll be doing that along with members of the community who are only beginning to become aware of these cuts. They, they wouldn't have known last night from what Joe Hockey said. Our job is to make sure they know that $80 billion of cuts were actually hidden last night and they're going to affect 
Um, mums and dads who want to make sure their kids get a great education, they're going, to help, they're going to hurt sick people that are trying to get treatment in our public hospitals and our GPs. Let, let's just talk about another issue uh, in the health area, Jay Weatherall. Um, the $7 co-payment um, on Medicare, are yeah. you concerned that that's going to lead to more people turning up at the emergency rooms of the hospitals in your state? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's another... Uh, consequence that will occur which will place further burdens on our, our public hospital system. People will rush into our emergency departments and it's no answer to suggest that we can also make a similar payment to, to these people. I mean how on earth do you administer between those people that are coming in for essentially a GP visit and other people that are coming in for uh, what is an emergency? It's impossible to administer. It's a, it's a, a pathetic uh, suggestion in response to what is an obvious cost shift back onto the state. So we're not playing that game. The, the federal government are going to have to take responsibility for the changes that they've put in today. They have to argue their case and uh, we will be resisting these changes and we'll be campaigning to have them reversed. Campbell Newman, briefly on the Medicare co-payment, do you share those concerns about the emergency rooms of your big hospitals? I do. And Sarah, we've done a lot of heavy lifting in the last two years to actually reform health in Queensland. We've dramatically improved the performance of those emergency departments. A lot of hard work on the ground by dedicated nurses and doctors and administrators. So they've taken the performance from 62-63% of patients being seen within the national target of four hours to uh, over 75. I think it's actually 78% now. Great effort. But they're now potentially going to be swamped by people who are trying to get uh, away from having to pay this money at the GP. So does, that, does that mean that I, I you do, would consider... To, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but does that mean that you would consider um, a fee for people coming into the emergency departments? Well, I don't think so, because I think Jay... While I, and I agree with Jay with what he said about the potential impact. I certainly agree with that. I also agree with him it's very difficult to cost-effectively administer that. You, how you, you're meant to get sort of $7 out of someone's pocket... Um, you know, the cost of administering that uh, will be more than that $7. And so I see great difficulties in actually doing that. Campbell Newman and Jay Weatherall, thank you very much indeed for joining 7.30. Pleasure. Thank you.